All right, so we're back and we're here to talk about what we've been doing. What we did was is that we went ahead and we went through the manual and we started doing some of the tougher things. Uh, what we found is that sometimes it's just easier not to do the soldering online or on the video. So what we did was we followed step one through nine of the manual. Basically what we did at that point is you tin each of the motors, contacts, and then you solder on the wires. Now, you have to take note that when you're soldering on the wires, you have to make sure you follow the directions correctly. There's a little red dot on each motor. One signifies, you know, the positive, negative, etc., etc. Except that for one of the motors, you have to reverse it, since it's going to be going like this. See, if the motors were together like that, you could probably put them at the same, uh, you know, positive and negative. But since you're putting them like this, you want to flip them around. That's one thing. The thing that we went and did is that we connected the ES, the tiniest, we saw the motors, and we also connected the the what they call the power jack and we actually connected the 9 volts now that that took us a little, it was a little bit tricky but you know we've took pictures of everything uh, each step by step and basically what we had to do combine the wires solder together and solder them to each one of the directions to how they have and at the end we applied the heat shrink with the lighter actually to melt it that's about it so the next step that we're going to start off on is we're going to start on step 10 so step 10, basically said, let's go ahead and grab the base. Let's zoom out here a little bit so you can see what we're doing. So again, we're on step 10, page 13 of the manual. So basically what it says is to go ahead and slide the left motor into the left motor mount and the right motor into the right. So basically we're we'll mounting the motors. Now, how do we know what's the left and right? So that is important. What you're gonna do is you're gonna refer back to your manual and on step one, they talk about left and right motors and how you wire them, okay? Now, let's see here. So basically, in step two, it says solder the, M, the brown M2 wire to one of the tiny ESCs to one motor's red terminal. So we're going to find the one that has brown to red, okay? Now, this one's red to red, so this is brown to red, and it says that this is our left motor. So, let's just double check it, brown to red, sure enough, we've got brown to red, and we're going to mount that to the left. Now, the left is going to be this side here, so we're just going to slip that in for now, and slip this one in for now, let's see, everything fit okay, sure, do, sure does look like it. Okay, so the next step is we're actually going to be tightening in, so we're going to be using these screws that came with it. Again, we don't use anything custom. We use whatever they give us. Every now and again we do, but you know, it really comes down to why we did it. Maybe they didn't have a proper mount or whatnot. But so basically there are four screws that are smaller than the rest. Those are the ones that you're gonna grab. Now those are the two 56 by 316 screws and they say use the smaller hex wrench which is this smaller one here there's two we're grabbing the small one now these are delicate from our experience you have to be careful with this stuff because being so small they strip very easily so what we're going to do is we're going to line up these holes here let's see how do we have this here Now this can be a little tricky because it's so small. So just take your time. There is no rush. This is a very easy kit to put together. There's not a lot of parts. So you don't have to hurry through anything. So I'm only going to tighten it a little bit, not all the way, because I need to put in the other screw and I need to make sure that the hole is lined up properly. So let's see here. Sure enough, we had to realign it, and there we go. not quite going in yet there it goes you can kind of feel it when it starts to screw in properly and again you know this is this uh, kit probably isn't going to be doing a lot but you want to give it a good firm twist make sure you tighten it um, I've seen some people where they use Loctite which is that special glue you put on the screws um, that's optional you don't necessarily have to Okay, so that's one. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Now let's screw in the other. Okay. I'm going to have to flip this around just to get the right uh, angle on this. Looks like we're having a little bit of problems there. Sorry about that. Looks like I'm not lining this up correctly, so let me just put that down. Take a look at this here. Zoom out a little bit. By far, this has been the most trickiest part, is lining up these holes here so I can screw it in properly. So that's not too bad. Okay, so now I'm just going to tighten this one up just a bit, there we go, and we're going to have the other screw here, already lined up that hole there. And there you have it. So we've gone ahead and we've put those there now. They're now lined up and they're mounted. So that completes step 11. So we've done steps 10 and 11. Now it says to basically tighten the power jack into the base plate using the finger nut. So the finger nut is actually attached to the power adapter here. So you just take that off. Now I'm just making sure there's no washer, sometimes there is a washer. So I'm going to plug that in there, as such, goes into that, there's only one hole where that's going to go, and you're going to take that nut and just tighten it up like so. I'm assuming this might be for recharging maybe, I'm not quite sure yet, but we'll leave it open for now. And okay. Uh, so they recommend using pliers. We're just going to hand tighten it for now, since we're not going to do anything crazy. Now that completes step 12. 